contacted by Ultra Clear Epoxy, they wanted me to try their product, give an honest opinion. And so, while I will be honest, they did not pay me for this, but they did offer me a, a nice little discount, so it certainly made it worth giving the product a try. So, I'm going to give this a whirl. Um, I've already poured up using their Art and Craft Epoxy. I do have, sitting over there in the box, I still have the deep pour, which I chose not to use for this first set of experiments. We're going to be working on the grapevines encased in resin for some more of the bottle stoppers that I do. And so now I'm going to go through and prep the rest of these and then we're going to see how some of this turns. And just in case you were wondering how much prepping I'm going to be doing, uh, here's everything I've prepped. A good portion of this spill, in fact all of that spill, is from me having trouble pouring in. It was actually much thicker craft epoxy than I was initially expecting, but that's okay. It actually looks like it turned out pretty clear in the end. And then just for fun, this one here and this one here, and that's, that's folded about there. Well, that's folded here. So we're gonna see how well this is cured. There is a grapevine in the top. So let me get all of these pried apart and then we'll get to turning. All right, it's got everything milled out. So that'll make it nice and easy to melt one at a time. And if I do hit just resin, I get very nice, pretty white snow. But it is peeling nicely in here, so we'll see just how, uh, how well it goes on the lathe. So as you can see, I've already peeled a couple back and worked on them because, well, I wanted to see how it was going to turn before I videoed it. So I've got another one all mounted up, ready to go. You can see toilet paper tube. That is my mold of choice. Why? Because I'm cheap, but it works. Uh, the resin did not leak, through, didn't ooze through. Uh, I've had some others that actually really did solidify within the toilet paper tube. So that's could be good, could be bad. It depends on what you want to do with it. But let's go on ahead and get that uh, get that lathe rolling. The internet and cameras. I have gone on ahead and mounted another one up, and I've started smoothing it out. You can see, I still have a little bit of toilet paper left. So let's see how uh, how we do from here. chips are the ones where I screwed up on the tool so maybe it's me. pretty sure it is me There's definitely some chatter in there. Some of that's me and my tools that I know for sure from history. So let's grab some sandpaper and uh, come back in just a moment. Already done a little bit of sanding, so we're gonna take up 400. Not bad. Not bad at all. I'll definitely have to take this up to a good 2000 and put some car polish on it, but 
here we have it. There we go, a better view. Yeah, it's definitely going to need some work. But that's okay. Add that here with the other two that I've done so far. I really do like the bottle shape. So, there you have it. We'll come back when I get to uh, finish. I got several more to make and then I'm going to finish these up and take them up to a much higher grit and see what happens. So here's one from a paper towel tube. So this was a truly deep pour. It was about six inches before I started trimming it down. And inside is only the bark of a couple of grapevines. What I did on this one was kind of rub the epoxy onto it. I figured I'd see if that would assist with uh, preventing any bubbles because in the past I have had problems with the bark giving lots of cool little cool bubbles, but bubbles nonetheless. And so now I'm just kind of working through making this go. This was a single pour. It is nice and solid, so yes, I know, you're not supposed to pour more than a half an inch, up to two inches on a deep pour epoxy, but hey, this was six inches in something about this big around, so, you know, that's because I'm impatient. So, let's go ahead and finish this up, and we'll see how this one turns out. Here we go. This has been sanded up to 2000. Then a little bit of Odie's oil on it to help fill it in and shine it the rest of the way. And as you can see, it turned out pretty nice. So as long as I can get the pieces to stay on, then this epoxy turns nicely, polishes up very nicely and uh, this will be a great piece when I'm done with it. So, I really like how that's turned out. I'm not sure if I want to give that to the client or keep it for myself, but give it to the client because like, you know what? I've got the tools, I've got the skills. I can always make another one. So, so doing it my slipshod way, you can see I did have some issues and that's just part of the game. I'm actually, given how the vine has turned, I'm actually questioning the vine as well because it looks like this is not the same varietal that I turned for my last batch. So that could be, I'll, I'll give that some of the issue. But uh, the rest, you know, again, I need to finish them up, but they are turning out nice. It's got a good chance it did stay on. Uh, can't wait to really polish this one up and then yeah real nice pretty one at the end so in the end the ultra clear epoxy I'm I'm pleased with it it's a lot better than one of the other ones that I've tried where midway through because I turn do all of my woodwork outside the UV light from the Sun actually caused the epoxy to start to soften and that was an absolute train wreck so, no names, won't name names here, but uh, anyways, yeah, had to start that whole project over. But this is good. I'm looking forward to trying the deep pour on another project. That one, I will actually follow the instructions with only pouring so deep before letting it cure some and then pouring another layer because I'm probably going to need about four inches of, of epoxy pour over a large area. So, we'll see. We'll see how that turns out, but I'm happy with the results given everything that I was dealing with. So, decent stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs>